everyone. My name is Graciela Blandon. I'm a junior in Gallatin studying class struggle and cultural development. And I am calling in today from my study abroad semester in Paris. So thank you so much for facilitating my participation at the symposium. I'd like to just begin by expressing my sincere gratitude to the Suki, Mehmet, and Kim for their constant support this year, and a special thanks to my incredible fellowship advisor, Sophie Gonick, whose guidance was truly invaluable to me. So I'll just jump right in. I spent this summer in Cadiz, Spain, working with the Andalusian Association for Human Rights, a self-identified pluralistic, secular, and independent association based on the 1948 Declaration of Human Rights. APDHA has seven delegations across 12 locations, and I worked with the Gaudi's delegation of APDHA in the capital. They base their works on uh, sensibilization and awareness of citizenship, protests and social reporting, elaboration and proposals of alternatives, and support and solidarity across the work areas of prisons, marginalization, migration, international solidarity, education, sex work, and feminism. <clears throat> so this summer, I was hoping to take a comparative approach towards human rights work in border contexts. I'm from El Paso, Texas, so I'm very interested in border scholarship and wanted to get a global perspective on the framing questions such as how do border populaces define their own sovereignty? Uh, what identities are created or destroyed due to living in periphery communities? And how are they affected by national identities, Europeanization, the idea of citizenship? And how does human rights and human right organizations play into that? Uh, why Spain? I was interested in the Spanish context due to the lingering memory of the Franco regime 15M, and the cultural and political fragmentation of autonomous regions, many of which have moved for independence in the past. Additionally, uh, the Spanish enclaves and of Melilla and Ceuta and Morocco have set the scene for tense relations between the Spanish and Moroccan governments, where Spain demands Morocco regulate uncontrollable migration, uh, due to COVID, I was unable to visit Morocco, but otherwise interns are taken to work on the border's front lines, as Morocco is only about 14 kilometers from the port of Gadis. <clears throat> I was uh, particularly attracted to APDH at Gadis because this delegation has been at the forefront of the migration crisis on Spain's southern border while managing a varied portfolio of intersecting human rights and advocacy work. As an intern, I did a lot of research specifically for the organization's Reportaje Frontera Sur, which is an annual report on the state of human rights on the southern border in Spain. Through that project, the organization hopes to analyze the evolution of migratory fluxes and the consequences of political changes on the lives and rights of migrants, as well as exposing systemic vulnerabilities in the human rights framework. The report is referred to by national and international media institutions and research organizations, so it was really exciting to contribute to it in the small way that I could. I also wanted to highlight a particularly rewarding dimension of my work, which was my ability to contribute design to APDH at Gadis. The delegation usually has to pay for outsourced graphic work, so I volunteered to be their on-site designer. <laughs> Apart from being really creatively fulfilling, this allowed me to get a holistic overview of the association's work because I was briefed on each project and was tasked with converting lots of dense research and manifestos into consumable formats with design appropriate to the project, and then they got printed, which is great. Uh, some key takeaways. Uh, the globalization and migratory discourse. Uh, I was interested in the extent to which migratory discourses get generalized being from El Paso, and I wasn't expecting just how similar the Spanish southern border would be to the U.S. border. The news reporting on Sofa and Melilla, for example, was almost verbatim wording as um, reports in El Paso's border. The images, as you can see, are also uncanny. Uh, this led me to questions about, you know, is there something essential about that our migratory politics develop along these archetypes. Uh, what's the source of the globalization and does it merit a global response via a universal human rights framework, even with all its pitfalls? <clears throat> I also felt like I had more in common in terms of lived experience with the people of Gadis, a COA, than with New Yorkers, because Gaditanos and El Pasoans are both borderlanders, which was something really interesting. 
Uh, I also had to neg negotiate a lot of uh, the implications of nonprofit work. You know, what does it mean that an organization is trying to integrate migrants? Uh, it, should we be complicating our view of that? Uh, APDHA is publicly funded and often assumes government responsibilities when the state is overwhelmed. So what happens when there's conflict with the state? Uh, funds aren't contingent on the organization's politics, but most folks are especially disenchanted with the institutionalization of their activist work. So what's next for me? Uh, I have a lot of different research interests, so I don't know if I'll continue looking at those through a human rights lens, uh, though I have a lot of unans unanswered questions <laughs> after this summer. Uh, personally, I was really happy to establish a network of friends and family in Spain. I'm hoping to continue contact and collaboration with the organization, especially in design work, since I can do that remotely. Uh, I gained a lot of confidence in the language, and I'm, I uh, am even thinking about grad school in Madrid now, because uh, I'm truly interested in localizing my studies in Spain after this summer. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, and for the opportunity to share. I can't wait to be back in New York City and see everyone in person again. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.